So previously we looked at inverse trig as a function, and this is not something you really need to know for grade 11, but for grade 12 we want to start understanding this idea that the inverse of the sine function can also be a function. And again, in order to make a function, we have to we have to pass a function test, and that's why the graphs, the inverse functions get trimmed, and that's why the output on your calculators have restricted, it's not for the full circle, it's only one part one half of the circle because otherwise we would end up with a non-function. Hey, it won't pass our vertical line test. So we can only have one angle and then we have to infer the theta two if we're talking about the full circle. Okay, so the, the arc tan, arc sine and arc cos functions are in fact trimmed when they are treated as functions, okay? But we do, what we want to focus, that's more for uh, function analysis. But what we want to use this for is we just want to make sure we understand how to undo functions using the inverse trig functions. Okay. And again, the what's really important from the previous part that we just went over okay, is really just the output, the range of the inverse tan functions that they are restricted. Okay. The, we when we undo tan, we don't get both sides of this circle. We only get from negative 90 to positive 90. When we undo cos, we don't get the bottom half of this circle. We only get from 0 to 180. When we undo sine, we don't get both halves of the circle again. We only get from 90 degree, negative 90 to positive 90. So that's the important part to understand when we are going to apply these problems, apply this inverse trig to these problems. So, one of the big issues is, and this is a big idea, and this is something that takes a little while to make sure that you're doing correctly all the time, but you have to be conscious of this, is, is this number, is our inputs here ratios or angles? Okay, the information given is that ratio or angle, and we need to be very clear on that. So this is arc sine. So the input of arc sine is a ratio. Okay, and our ratio is our ratio is negative. So it's going to be in quadrant one and two. Now the input here, okay, could be from both both sides of the circle. However, when we output the arc sine, we know we're only going to deal with the left, the, sorry, the quadrant one and quadrant four. So when we look at this negative sine ratio, okay, so again, this is important that we recognize that this is a ratio. The fact that normally we would draw this in two quadrants, because we're using the arc sine function, we're only going to draw it in one quadrant. So that's five, that's eight. I'm going to write, draw this a little bit more accurately. It's going to be more like this. 5, 8, so that's going to be negative 5. And then using Pythagoras, I get square root 39. Okay, so we're not going to worry about the other side of this because we are using an arc, so arc cos, which only is defined, sorry, an arc sine, which is only defined for this half of the circle. Okay, and essentially that's our theta one that we're going to solve for. So when I solve for that theta, okay, there's my theta. We can actually work out the angle, but since we're going to do the cosine of this angle anyways, the cosine of this, of this angle in this position, in this particular position in quadrant four, the cosine is going to be positive. So the ratio then, so my final answer is the output is a ratio. So the ratio is going to be square root 39 positive over 8. Okay, because that's going to be based on this. So it's going to be essentially cosine of theta. Okay, and maybe I should be even more clear. That's really just theta 1. Okay, because we're only going to use that half of the circle because of this arc sine function. Okay, so that's important the big big idea then again is 
is my input here a ratio or angle? If it's a ratio, I need to be able to draw it, understand the quadrants, the, the quadrants that arc sine or arc tan or arc cos are defined in, and then we can just cosine, find the ratio, the exact ratio, based on that angle in position. We don't actually have to find the angle. We can just use this shape, the position of that blue dot. Okay, so here I'm taking the sign. So this is a ratio. I'm doing arctan, so this is an angle. So this X, the inputs for the arctan must be a ratio. Okay, in my output, my answer should be a ratio as well. It should be the sine ratio. So I'm going to look at my ratio x. Okay, I'm going to, going to draw it in quadrant 1. And I'm going to draw it like this. I have no idea what it looks like. One thing that please do not do is draw it in at 45 degrees because that implies symmetry. And it will mess up our analysis. Sometimes symmetry uh, will... If we know the symmetry, we know much more information. And here, we don't know that symmetrical. Okay, so there's my, my initial diagram for the tangent of x. And my arc tan is, must be restricted to those two quadrants. And then I'm being asked to find the sine ratio of this angle theta. Okay, so I'm just going to draw this angle theta in here. I'm going to call that theta 1. And really, that is... When I do the arctan of that, it's going to be theta 1. So the sine of theta 1 is going to be this angle here. This, and I'm going to use a, a opposite and hypotenuse side. It's going to be 1 plus x squared. So the sine is going to be one, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so that's going to be my sine of this angle in terms of the angle of this ratio x. Okay, so there it is.